Many people using computer these day. Playing video games. Searching Google. Chatting in Facebook. And many people these day using laptop other than a desktop. There are two types of laptop. Ultrabook, thin and light. Gaming laptop, large and heavy. Stay tuned. Gaming laptop these day are heavy, unheavy as you think. Like the XPS 15, Razer Play 14, or Facebook, they are laptop under five pounds, but still packing a GTX 1060 and 1050 graphic cards. And also, they are really light. Like they are something like powerful, like a GX 501 or GS 63 VR, MSI, packing a 1080 or 1070, but still under six pound. But it take a long time to go uh, to reach this far. In the year 2001, a laptop with Pentium 3. Imposible in la vida real? Hazlo en la red con el poder del procesador Pentium 3 en tu computadora. Poder para vivir el internet a fondo. And a GeForce 2 Go graphic. And a massive 128 megabyte of RAM. And blistering fast 20 gigabyte hard drive. It was a top-end gaming laptop. With this powerful spec, the weight is 7.49 pounds. Also, gaming laptop in that time has really bad battery life. Thanks to the desktop class CPU, the TDP of it is 88 watt. Look at the TDP. The TDP 88 watt is not good for laptop, and it sucks too much power. Example, the 81M4 M17. A 17-inch laptop with a Core i7 and an HD 4870X2. It is huge and heavy. It has really good I.O. for a laptop, but the size. It even have a switchable graphics, but still have really bad battery life, thanks to the first generation i7 and a graphic card. The uh, year 2014, a company called Razer designed a new laptop, Razerblade 14. A MacBook Pro light gaming laptop and an Intel all new 22 nanometer refined Haswell CPUs. Razer can make the device thin and light but still powerful like a desktop thanks to the NVIDIA all new Maxwell Articulator based on 28 nanometer thin fat process. It can do deep learning, scientific research. Movie production, 3D animations, modeling, and also gaming for at 4K with a high efficiency GPU. The, they actually can make one of the graphic color this big to become this small. So that is how how, how far we comes. From 2006, we cannot even run any games in 1080p on a gaming laptop that is bulky like a brick that is 24 kilograms, like an IBM 5100. And like for the gaming laptop, but it was not, it cannot run any game in 1440p low settings. In 2016, finally, we have something that actually can game on. We wanted to design and build an incredibly powerful laptop without compromising. And we continue to raise the bar to deliver the highest performance for the gamer in incredibly innovative form factors. With the latest and most powerful Intel Core i7 processors, a 14-inch razor blade is gonna achieve stunning frame rates for the most intensive PC games of today, as well as for tomorrow. The videos and laptops that Razer's accomplished with a 14-inch razor blade Equipped with the GeForce GTX GPU, the Razer Blade delivers what we in NVIDIA call pure performance that gamers demand, all in an impossibly thin and insanely powerful gaming laptop. And with our battery-saving optimus technology, the new Razer Blade screams both power and portability. New architecture called Nehalia, based on the 45 nanometers global function process, it, it, lets, it let the efficiency go uh, higher, but the, but the core counts bump up to from two to four to a lap for a laptop. For example, I the, the i7 920 MX 
the Extreme Edge Edition Core i7 for a laptop, but only have consumed a 55 watt TDP. Compare with a compare with a traditional Pentium 4 laptop, it was a big what well, a big jump because the 88 watt on a single core compared with a quad core with a 55 watt, but still have the improved IPC instruction per clock, so you can do more things in one time. But that's not enough. The graphic card still bottleneck in that era, because uh, caused by uh, because the 8800 GTX mobile version has a really bad battery life. Uh, it's consumed too much power. It's too weak for handle like something like Crisis, which is the uh, people always says, "Can you run Crisis?" In uh, so and then Fermi uh, based on 40 nanometer, but also they improved. When in the year 2011, they improved the 20 nanometer, which once again shrink down the, um, the size of the die. Also, gives you a better efficiency. But the performance between the desktop and the laptop still have a huge gap. Gentlemen, we've had this house under surveillance for several weeks now. A typical nondescript suburban house in a development north of the city. Let's go to the infrared taken from the police helicopter. Here, you can see a major hotspot coming from the dwelling. This area here, in the west end of the house, is what caught our eye because the amount of heat being generated there is suspicious. Based on those suspicions, we took a look at their energy consumption. Here's a summary of the report from the local hydro utility. Now on the left, we have a typical power usage scenario for a house of this size. But on the right, we have the house under surveillance. Finally. We have surveillance photos of people entering and exiting the dwelling at all hours of the night. I bet we're going to find something green in there. There's nothing more to say here. Gentlemen, let's do some good tonight. Let's shut these guys down. Operation commences 2300 hours. Fermi again. It's the third time this week. Keep cool, keep all the power. And not until 2014, Nvidia introduced the Maxwell architecture and Intel introduced the Haswell. Also based on 22 nanometers. But they improved both the, uh, the power efficiency by 20%, which allow you to run the which is the same era that the Razer introduced the brand new Razer Blade 14, the thin and light laptop that have a really long battery life, but still have the power of a real desktop. This is the first time that the desktop GPU and the laptop GPU has the only like 20% performance gaps, but still have a really long battery life. Now let's let David to interview the student have a gaming laptops. What's your user experience? Experience? So, okay. at first I think uh, I buy it for a bit and then I think it's good. Sometimes the radiator is not work and the fans noise is so much. Um, 去电脑吧。嗯，散热可以，显示也可以。因为现在游戏发展比较快，一般的游戏本买了，大概它的使用寿命只有两年。两年之后，它一般就已经淘汰。The price performance actually really holds up really good. It has the low, four times to five times the performance of a low end a thousand dollar laptop. Pascal basically. Fit the power, the most powerful Maxwell performance into a laptop that but still consume a half of uh, the battery that the uh, Maxwell did. Power of a Titan X that has a 250 volt TDP fit into the laptop. It only consumes 90 volt TDP compared with a 250 volt, but in frame rate you can crush it by 10%. This is how the Pascal did. They, 
actually downgrade the core size to 2560 compared to 2880 in the Maxwell but then to the higher clock speed and the improved IPC instruction per clock and the power efficiency Intel also didn't stop they introduced the Skylake which is another 14 nanometer global foundry process uh, with the board well but they introduced DDR4 higher, which has a higher clock speed in the memory which means higher bandwidth in a single channel operation mode and usually laptop using dual channel from the 25 gigabit per second it can run to 40 gigabit per second which is double almost double on the memory bandwidth in the past many games doesn't leverage this kind of performance not until now that it has a lot of un unoptimized game like assassin creed origin it can consume all your memory and your cpu usage so and then, in the year 2017, Intel introduced the KB Lake. KB Lake is the same as the Sky Lake in terms of IPC, but have a clock speed bump and improved efficiency. A KB Lake laptop can do 12 to 13 hours in standby, which is impressive for a gaming laptop. That is how the laptop become from now, from the past become now.